Hello, House Churches. This is a down week this week, and we're looking forward to being out in the community, doing acts of service, and committing to being God's kingdom in this world. It's a good idea to have an act of service or a project that you do month by month so that you can do the same thing each time. And over time, what you'll find is that the stories begin to develop between yourselves, between the community, and in the places in which you're doing your service. And as you'll see from the text that we look at this week, those stories being developed is very important and very special. We're starting a new series this week called But. And around the staff room, we've had more than a few jokes about that, but I'm sure that you guys can think of a few, so I won't spoil your fun by giving away of any of those right now. The series that we're looking at, uh, we're focusing on 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And throughout this text, what Paul is doing, writing to the Corinthians, is talking to them about the glory of God as it is revealed to us in Jesus Christ. This glory that is revealed in Jesus Christ then becomes evident in our lives, says Paul, as the gospel of Jesus Christ becomes written upon our lives. It's a beautiful thing. It's a very moving passage. The question for me came out of, out of the text as I struggled with what Paul means by glory. He speaks about Jesus as the glory of God, and I want to know this. I want to feel and experience what the glory is. And so I am asking, how do I see the glory of God? The light bulb came on for me in verse 4 of chapter 4, where Paul writes that the light of the gospel is the glory of Christ Jesus, and he is the image of God. The light of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the story, the good news of who he is, of God incarnate upon earth, of God who is here among us and in the midst of us, the God who is healing us, who is setting us free from sin, who lived for us, who died for us, he who is risen and who gives himself even still through his Holy Spirit, so that we might live and not die. This is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Seeing that gospel as God's glory and then seeing how that gospel can take place and take shape in our lives is the light bulb for me because it directs me to see that gospel written in the lives of the people around me and my own. And so the arrow for me for this week comes in two parts. One is inward and the other is outward. For myself, for inward, I want to see the gospel written in my life. And so I'm praying, dear dear Lord, can you show me this week? Can you show me in my life where you would like the gospel to be made plain? Where does the good news need to take hold in my life? And then for the outward part, I would like to see the gospel written in the lives of other people. And I can begin to understand what Paul means when he says, I proclaim Jesus Christ and myself as a slave your slave for his sake, because I want to see the gospel written in the lives of the people around me, and I want to actually be a slave to that, trying to help the gospel be written there and to be made known there. I want to help that happen, and I want to see it because I want to see the glory of God, the gospel written in other people's lives. So as we go forth this week in our acts of service, as it is a down week, And as we talk to each other in our house churches, I hope that you will be able to share stories of how the gospel has taken hold in your life, how the gospel has transformed your life, and in what ways the gospel is shining like a light out of your life. And may you hear and may you know these stories because as you see them, what you are seeing is the glory of God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ written in each other's lives. May you be blessed this week to see that. Grace and peace be with you. Amen.